Today we're recreating the scene from Rogue One where the ships are about to escape into hyperspace and the Star Destroyer shows up and uh, just wrecks house. And it's a great shot because you got a lot of things going on here. You got ships coming in, they're you know, turning, they're moving, and then you know this thing comes into into view, and that's the, the end of the scene here. Uh, I think uh, nine, eight years on from this thing, we can use some free software here, um, some free models that people have built based off of this on the internet, and we'll see what we can do. All right, let's get started. Uh, some of the first things we're gonna do is we gotta find some models here. So someone actually has rebuilt the entire uh, Rogue One Imperial Star Destroyer. Uh, this guy up here, however you say his name, uh, it's on ArtStation, it's free, uh, just make sure you credit him for it. And then this other guy uh, on CG Trader, Dermalt, he has created this absurdly detailed uh, blockade runner, which has been fantastic to use. Uh, it usually crashes my computer about every other time I use it because it's so detailed and it's a humongous file. Uh, the Star Destroyer is also rather large, I want to say it's about 2.5 gigs uh, file size. Um, once you do that and you find all the other ships here from the scene that you want to use, or some suitable replacements if you can't find them. Uh, we'll load those into the scene and we'll start to animate them and see what we can do for it. Okay, so we've imported our Star Destroyer into the scene here. Uh, I think we've kind of figured out where we want to do that here. I've added an empty onto almost all the ships here so I can grab them and move them and animate everything based on the empty instead of the individual pieces because sometimes that can get pretty uh, uh, built up. Um, so we already know the scene, the Star Destroyer is going to come in and it's going to be yeah, oh, roughly about that angle here. All right, so we'll do uh, control at zero, get the camera angle lined up here. If you go to camera here, it's set for like 100 meters and this ship's humongous, so bump that out a ways. Okay, and then let's do 85 millimeters. Lock this to view. And we need to change the format. Let's make this a bit wider. Okay. Right about there. We'll go with that. That's uh, that's gotta be pretty close. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. That works. So one of the first things we gotta do is we gotta set up the lighting for this scene. Um, a couple of things you can do to make life a little bit easier is change the noise threshold for this because there's gonna be a lot of light issues here otherwise, and you're gonna go crazy with that. Uh, it's motion blur. All right. Uh, as we come in here, so if we go over to the kind of render view here, it's going to start pausing because this is a huge file. Hopefully it doesn't crash. All right, we're good to go. So right now we've only got the one light in the scene. Okay, we can actually just delete that guy. We don't need it. Uh, what we do need to add in though is a sunlight. So sun, uh, you can grab it here and move it like you need, however, uh, I tend to just use the um, transform and rotation tools up here. So I know the Y's got to come up this way. And one thing of note here, when you're doing with space stuff, there's not a lot of, you know, there's no atmosphere to, you know, disperse the light at all. Uh, what you, I usually do is I lower this to about a 0.1. That'll create a little bit harsher shadows, harsher shadow line. Um, And the other thing we'll do is we'll up the intensity to uh, about a one. So that's not too far off. We've got the nice harsh shadows over here. It's really bright over here. Uh, some of this will come once we actually fix this um, with color grading, but this should be pretty good. So. All right, that works for what we're looking for. Um, the other thing of note here, I was looking at the ships earlier. We move back over, so we're not even doing yeah, maybe like a 45 to 90 degree turn. Okay, so it's not, not a huge turn. Okay, when this comes in, the light is striking the Star Destroyer on this side of it, right? And that's kind of what we've built out in our scene too, right? So the light is at 76 degrees, so it's almost perfectly over here, and it's only you know 12 degrees off of where it normally would be in terms of you know, the, the z-axis and the circular so we're creating some shadows definitely going over this way the thing i noticed in here okay when we back up just a little bit and turn is that this ship here has light on this side of it and this one has it on the other side of it so what i think they've done here is they've grouped these 
few shifts together. They got lighting coming kind of more from this angle here because they got you know, less light on this side of the ships, whereas these all around them have light on the opposite side. I know they are turned a little bit in here, but I don't think they're turned as drastically as the lighting would make it think. So, I mean, look at this one coming across. Okay, it's not turned that drastically that I think it's using the same light source. So I think what we'll do is we'll try to add these ones into a different render layer, and then we'll add the sunlight in for those and make it not affect the other ones. So as this comes in, then we have got there. So the next thing of note we're gonna see here is that right now the focus is on this point. So what I mean by that is you know, the, the focal point is somewhere over on this ship. This one's slightly out of focus. This one, it kind of drops off a bit. And this uh, frigate back here is out of focus. This uh, you know, Corvette down here is out of focus. And this one in the foreground definitely is out of focus, right? It's got this blur. Plus you got the added effect of motion blur. So as it moves forward, the frigate you know, goes out of focus. And this Corvette, which is uh, coming into the center of the frame, as you see it here, it's it's blurry because it's you know not in the right depth of field for focus point, and then it changes, so they, they pull focus onto this ship instead. And how we're going to achieve that, we're going to make an empty, and we're going to parent or actually track our camera to that empty, and then we'll actually track the uh, the focus point of the camera as well. So if we go back to here, camera. There we go. Okay, so the camera, the focus object is an empty, which I made, which is this. Okay, so this empty. And so the empty, you can see it's centered in the middle of the frame. It always is going to be in the center of that frame. Um, and as it moves, or the frame, you know, the animation moves along, the distance between where the empty is and the actual camera will shorten to, you know, take in this Corvette as it moves past through the scene. And then it's going to pull on, because once you see as the Star Destroyer comes into view, it's already in focus, right? So we need the focus to already be kind of ready for it as it jumps in. So what we're going to, what I ended up doing for this, if we look, let's see if I can get moving here. As the frames move along, it pulls in. So you can see right here, this is almost completely in focus here, and on this view, everything's gonna be in focus, but uh, it's the, like the same kind of depth distance wise. So this is fully in focus. Uh, this Corvette here is hammerhead one and in the foreground is much more in focus. And then as it turns, right, the empty pushes out further to meet the Star Destroyer once it comes right into frame. So by that point, it's already ready for it. And then uh, I want it to be kind of right around where um, this ship, this transport ship is um, going going to hit this here. All right. So again, from right here, as it moves along, the ship's turn, the focus shifts to the Corvette, and then it pushes out to meet that transport, right as the Star Destroyer comes into view. All right. And one of the trickiest pieces of this is where this transport ship actually goes and strikes into the Star Destroyer causing an explosion. I kind of cheated a little bit. I went to uh, Action VFX. They have some free stock footage for some spell hits, which are not the right color. Uh, but what I ended up doing was I made some explosions with those. So using spell hits and changing them to actually, um, well, one, be transparent and then uh, change the color of them to be more of like a yellowish orange for an explosion. Okay, and you can see here, these are just flat images. Um, I just in increased the intensity of them and the, the emission strength um, so that it would actually light up the areas inside of there. Um, a couple of things I did run into though uh, was some of the transparency issues. Um, what I ended up having to do is I ended up having to bump up the number uh, in the transparent one just because they were otherwise leaving like a black uh, outline to it. And then the other thing, which I didn't expect, um, which I had some issues with, for ray visibility, sometimes it, the picture of, of them, these little uh, PNG image sequences, would actually leave shadows, uh, There's even though they're transparent. So if you deselect shadow, 
um, that would actually remove the, um, sometimes it would just leave like a big square shadow behind it. Um, by, by deselecting that, that would get rid of that. Once I was all said and done with moving uh, all the objects around and getting the paths and the, the focus points and lighting all set up, I uh, moved over to the, the render files. Okay, I was ready for to export it here, so I, I went to compositing, set for the EXR multi-layers, uh, rendered each layer out individually, and brought them back into Blender, and then rendered them uh, together, uh, creating my, my composite look. Uh, from there, I actually went over and followed uh, Robin Rood, or actually, correction, Robin Squares. Uh, he's got a color grading um, video that he likes, the film look here. Highly recommend it. Uh, I ended up using that one for my final product, and uh, let's see how it turned out.